Hi, today I'm going to install the tail, assemble and set up a remote control and finally I'm going to send this beauty airborne. But I know you can't wait to see how it performs in action. So first I'm going to show you how I launched it. And for those who have missed the previous episodes, links are in the description below. First I want to check if my ornithopter can fly. Launching and controlling it at the same time is difficult. So I got Max to assist me. And here we are in the park to do a bit of flying. As it turns out, it is not the easiest thing in the world. Remember my first prototype, the red one? I noticed that the wings flex too much when it's flying. 3mm rods came out way too flexible. Here in the Bluebird I installed sturdier 4mm rods, which led to the fact that the bird can't fly anymore. Nylon gears now get turned loose as the reduction gear load increased significantly. Long story short, I have to replace nylon gears with the steel ones. A new launch, no luck again. Now we're facing yet another problem, the strong wind. By experimenting we figure out that the bird won't fly with wind speed greater than 4 meters per second. However, after replacing nylon gears, we could just proceed to the next launch without the lengthy repair. The wind was too powerful and we couldn't fly normally. Though we made sure that the bird can bump into trees, bushes and even the ground multiple times with no problem. Try to guess what it bumps into this time. We waited for some calm moments to launch the bird again. But it didn't solve the problem, it just refused to fly. Because of the fact that the bird became heavier, it lacked horizontal speed to gain enough momentum and kept falling over and over. Then we found out about another peculiarity of that bird. Sometimes it hit the ground and lost the tail. And the reduction gear shifted. The problem with the tail was the servo horns were weak, so it was turned off every time. We had a set of all non-metal parts on us, so we coped. It was even easier with the reduction gear. On a hit, the gears changed the positions, so there appeared a space between them. We could go on torturing the device, but after another hit, something unexpected happened. A 2mm steel shaft that turned gears of the reduction gear, it just broke. It happened because after each fall the reduction gear kept working. So on contact with the ground, one wing was stopped while another was flapping. It led to the shafts breaking in half. We didn't have such a part on us, so we had to postpone the flying till we fixed it all. We're back in the park. After analyzing the previous failures, we saw that after gaining that weight, the ornithopter started to depend heavily on the tail's positioning. The smallest drift led to a drastic shift in the bird's behavior. That is a very important part. Because if the tail was turned even a bit, the bird would instantly stall on launch. We were ready to abandon that whole dream of ever flying. But taking into account all the mistakes, we decided to have another shot. And oh boy, we did fly.
Thank you for watching, guys. That is it for the flying part. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, because soon I'm going to have something special on my channel. And now I get to the part where I talk about the tail and the remote control. This ornithopter may already be able to fly, because it possesses horizontal speed. And because I don't want it to look like Brownian motion, I need a steering mechanism. A tail. But do real birds need a tail? Yes, they actually do use quill feathers for steering. However, a bird that has lost a tail seems to be able to fly almost as well as a healthy bird. But it's really not true. Tail surface makes a bird's profile smooth and streamlined, as well as eliminates whirl behind it during the flight. That's why a tailless bird would experience much worse air drag compared to a healthy bird. Moreover, a tail is used as a weight balancer. For instance, when a bird lands on a tree branch or a wire, it flaps its tail to avoid flipping. Often before landing, a tail may function as a brake. It gets open to the fullest and aimed down. During a vertical descent, it acts as a parachute with spread at wings. That's how cool bird tail is. My little ornithopter has a much similar one. A tail is just a steering mechanism. I'll attach it via two little servos. One of them will move it up and down. 20 degrees thus changing the bird's position. This kind of adjustment is called draw. The other will turn it left or right, 30 degrees. It called pitch. For remote control, I had two options. Either I adapt already existing device for my ornithopter, or to make my very own one. So I decided that dealing with a ready-made device is not my ninja way. That was a big mistake. Shh. I need an onboard controller that will be installed on the ornithopter's fuselage. It has to be light and compact, so I chose Iskro Nano Pro. I also need a board for the remote control itself. Here's the side doesn't matter that much, so I chose the original Arduino Uno. The computing capabilities of these controllers are more than enough for manipulating an ornithopter. In order to link the remote control and the ornithopter, I use MB868 version 2.0. It is a radio transmitter working in the range of 863 to 873 MHz. It can both receive and send a signal in up to 15 km radius. The controller communicates with the module via your interface. I also use a power module for portability, a slider potentiometer for adjusting the flap rate and a joystick to control the tail. As all the parts are modular, I can assemble the device without soldering. I created the application on XAD. It makes the retransmitter and the receiver communicate by constantly exchanging 5 byte packages. The first byte states the start of a new data package. The next 3 bytes set the flap rate, roll and pitch. And the last byte is a checksum. It checks if the package has been read with no losses or changes. Thank you for watching guys, that is all for today. As I told you, please subscribe, because soon I'm going to have something special. Give me a big thumbs up. Uh, in the comments below, please write what you also want to see on my channel. That is all for today. Bye-bye.